Hello everyone, it's Amy, and I am here to do just a, a comparison of the different die cutting machines that I have. And um, I just want to say up front that I do have a lot of die cutting machines. Um, my husband and I each get a weekly allowance, and I save my allowance, and I like to buy tools. Also, I have a craft outlet that sells everything is 50% off when it goes in there, and then each week they have a different category that is another 40 or 50 percent off so these machines actually I got very reasonably most of them um, and so you know please don't um, you know like think that I'm just trying to be like woohoo look what I've got but I told Marsha I would compare what I had because she's thinking about getting a machine and um, this machine which is the crossover by um, Tattered Lace is actually my favorite now um, and I got this at the craft outlet I believe for $60 and then also I do have another the the other large that I have is the Spellbinders Grand Caliber and I got that one I believe for $60 um, the very first machine that I bought was my Sizzix Big Kick and um, this one I got at Michael's for uh, 50 percent off regular price that was the very first machine that I bought and then I wound up getting some dies and these were the dies that I got and it will fit up to this die I got these in a D stash but this one and everything that goes past it will not fit in the big kick which is the only reason that I don't like it is it's not wide enough um, and then so my husband picked this up for me at the craft outlet one day on his way home from work. Um, it was on clearance, and um, he got that at the craft outlet. And that one will take the wider dies and the wider embossing folders. Um, I watch a show called Create and Craft, and they had this little one called The Baby Blue by Tattered Lace. And this one I got, they had it half price one day special with some dies and some paper and um, different sorts of things and I really liked the idea of being able to just pull out this little baby blue and use it on the couch use it wherever I want to use it so I really do like it for that and then when the craft outlet had these on clearance um, I just couldn't help myself but to try one and I love it because it only has two plates and it adjusts itself it has a roller here that adjusts the rollers up and down to give you less or more pressure so you can do everything embossing folders whatever you don't have to remember the combination of your plates and and it will also take anything large you know from small to large so this is kind of my go-to now because it will do everything but I still love my big kick best for my big styes the big fat ones and I hate to say it but I really don't use the grand caliber much anymore um, unless I have people over crafting and we're doing everybody's cutting at the same time then it's nice to have that extra large um, base on that one so I'm going to get my tripod out do these one at a time and you know just show you how they work and what I think of them so thanks for watching I'll be back in just a second okay so I'm back with the big kick and what you get with the big kick is usually two cutting plates and a base plate now they do have a longer base plate and I think that when they sell them now they sell them with the long base plate I had to buy mine separately because without that long base plate you could not cut any long dies so um, if you do get a big kick make sure that it comes hold on just a second okay so make sure that it comes with the long extended plates and um, so you get two plates just like the small ones and then you have to also get the extended platform so like I said I do think that maybe they're sold that way now because they have all the long dies and then also this is called a solo shim and when I got my big plate my long extended plate this solo shim was sold separately and it's just a piece of plastic and it for just a piece of plastic it wasn't cheap it was like I don't know 10 bucks or something um, so if you can get the solo shim along with 
this pad. But like I said, I think that maybe they come with the long plate now. If they don't come with the long plate and this is what you're getting, then check your prices on your long plate and find out what those are in case you... The hardest thing is, is that when I first bought this, I didn't know about all the different types of things that you could have. And I started finding out that there were things I could not do with this. So, and then there were also things that, oh, I'll never do that. I'll never have, you know, a great big embossing folder. Um, well, then I got some, you know, and I thought I'd never have great big dies. And then I bought some in a D stash, you know, and then I had dies I couldn't use. So think about what you're going to do. And if you have the option of getting something wider, and they do make this in a great big machine. Um, the reason that I like my crossover better than this would have been if it was a big machine is this takes up a lot of space by itself and when it's a big machine it takes up even more space and they don't fold up and that's the nice thing about the the crossover is it folds up into like a little suitcase and you know stores just about anywhere but I still love this machine and what I use it mostly for is I use it for the big dies, the big fat dies. Um, I just love it for this, and the big fat dies are actually, um, they were my favorite dies when I started, and I still love them. I love that they'll cut through anything. So when you use the big fat dies, you just use your two plates, one on the bottom, then your die, one on the top, and then you just roll it through. These are all manual machines. Um, you can buy electronic machines and there we go. Sometimes when you've got dies like this they're not really not cut they just kind of are you know they get kind of stuck in places but so there you've got the negative and there you've got the positive and that worked so easily. Um, this will also work with embossing folders and the one thing that I really like about this one is that on the plate, whether you get the big one or the little one, it tells you this level is to do wafer thin dies. And this level is to do embossing folders and impression pads and your heavier kind of thin type dies. And then this one is for if you're using an embossing folder with your cardstock folded in half because believe it or not just the width of a paper can actually make a difference as to whether it will go through the machine or not or whether it will cut. Um, if you put something through and it doesn't cut but you're on the right level and the next level doesn't work just put a piece of paper in there and, um, and then that will work. Here I've got some, I do have a wafer thin die here and always, this is just a platform, you always use both of your cutting plates. So cutting plate, paper, and, oh, the other thing is I always lose my cutting plates. It's underneath. But I set them on my table. If you put a black line, I've heard, put a black line around your edges, it's easier to find. Because I'm always just setting them somewhere and then it's like, where did that plate go? And clicking and clanking on all the machines is pretty normal. So, this just means that they're good and tight. And here we go with this one. Now, I really am not cut right here. So, what I'm going to do, I cut everywhere else. Oh, it is well, just one little spot. Um, what you can do is if you don't get a good cut, you just take a, you just, it's best to leave them together and not take it apart like I just did. I was just trying to find out where it was still connected. But it's best to just leave it together where it was. You can line them back up again, but it's kind of difficult. Leave it together as it is, and then just take a little piece of paper, even just rip off a little piece of paper and stick it right in that spot where it didn't cut and only in that spot. If you put it over the whole thing, now you've got the same pressure over the whole thing. So um, you just put a little piece of paper in there and what they say to do is take a piece of paper and rip all four sides because if you have a really straight edge or like if I really were to put this umbrella on here and then set it there, when that went through the die cutting machine, it would kind of emboss that shape of the umbrella onto my paper where it pressed it into the paper. So if you tear your paper, the torn edges are very soft and they don't they don't put a crisp line even if they put a teensy bit of a dent it's not noticeable so but um 
I can't redo that because I took it off. But that's what you would do. And this one actually, it was just this one little point and there it came off. So, but that's what you would do if it doesn't cut all the way through. You can also do embossing folders with this one. And so to do the embossing folders, you have to open it up to, I only have one piece of paper. So embossing folder with one piece of paper in it. That goes on the bottom. Then plate. Set my die down. All right. Here's an embossing folder with some swirls on it. And then I'm just going to take that piece that I just cut and stick it in there. And then your other plate. So this works great for the big dies. It works great for, for wafer thin dies. It works great for embossing folders. The only thing that this does not do, and the only reason I wind up wound up getting another one, is it does not do the large wafer thin dies or any kind of large, anything that's wider than this mouth, which I believe is six inches. Um, and this is a large embossing folder that I got. It won't take that because it won't fit in there. So the only thing it won't do is something that's larger than this six inches. And it embosses beautifully. So this is a very good machine. I really do like this machine. And um, if I didn't have anything large, I would have still had only this machine. But, you know, as crafters, you always want to try something else anyway. So I suppose I couldn't say that. But I'm going to go to the next machine that I got, which is the Grand Caliber. And I will be right back in a minute and we'll go over that one. Okay, so this is the Grand Caliber, and the Grand Caliber comes with a cutting plate and an embossing plate, and I believe the magnetic shim, which holds your dies in place, and then your base plate. And see, you're not supposed to cut on your base plate, but I did on accident. Um, what you can buy, oh, and I think that it also might come with a rubber embossing mat. So what you have to get separate is um, the adapter plate and the metal shim. And the metal shim is good for if you're cutting a die that's very, very intricate, the metal um, spacer, whatever, the metal plate, works really well because you've got metal, metal pressing against metal and it makes a better cut for all those little tiny intricate cuts. So it's nice to have a metal plate and actually... This was just a piece of metal plate that I had, and um, I use it, and it works really well. But um, the reason that I got this machine was for my larger dies. And so, now this one has a little piece that slides out, and on here it explains that um, if you want to cut, you use A and C. And so, uh, here's the A plate, which is the base plate and the C plate. So there's my base plate. I'm going to take the larger cutting die that would not fit through my big shot and put a piece of paper on there. Now this paper is just a touch too wide. So I'm just going to trim a little bit off the edge so that it doesn't get caught in the edges of my machine. I just want it to be as wide as my plates. You don't ever want anything hanging over the edge, the side edges of your plate. Okay, so my die is facing up, so it's going to cut against my cutting plate. And we're just going to put that in there. Bring it forward so you can see. And then you just crank it through. And this has like a, it has a suction cup on the bottom with a little lever to engage that suction cup. But being that I'm doing it on a tablecloth, um, I can't use that. You have to have it on a slick surface. So there we go. And the one thing that I do not like about this machine is it doesn't have anything to catch your plates on the other side. So you have to reach over there and you know wait for them to come out the other side and grab them. Um, and there's no place to set it here in the front to get it all le leveled up. you got to kind of level it up and then put it in your machine. And that's one thing that I do not like about this machine. So there we go, but it cut very nicely. And um, it also embosses. And to emboss, you need your embossing plate. It says that you need your base plate. And we're going to 
take our embossing folder, we'll go ahead and we'll emboss this piece that we just cut. And I think with this is the embossing plate that you use with the embossing folders. So we've got that set up. Oops, it only caught one plate for some reason. If this was stuck down, I could use one hand to push my plates in a little bit and the other hand to roll it, but being that it's not stuck down, I'll have to use my hip. Okay, that's not working. So even though this says embossing plate, this is not the embossing plate I need. This is where I needed this adapter plate because it's this adapter plate is thinner than this embossing plate. So see the difference in size there? If you can see, I don't know. Um, so I needed this thinner adapter, which is what you use for the embossing plates. So we'll see how this works. This does not feel like it's doing anything. It's rolling very easy, so we will find out. That is the other thing that I don't like about this machine is it has so many plates, and um, yeah, that barely touched it. So I've got my base plate, and I am going to try... What I'm going to do is I'm going to stick an extra piece of paper in there. And that's the one thing with your embossing folders. If things don't quite fit, too loose, add a shim. Too tight, you need to change your plates or, um, you know, change up what you're doing. So in order to make this piece of paper fit, I need to trim off the edge. And then go back with the thin plate because the, the heavier plate just would not fit through there. So going to the heavier plate is not going to help me any. Get it started. Once you get it started, then you can hang on to your machine. And this still does not feel like it's doing very well. And I do apologize. I have not used this machine in so long that once you have a machine and you start using it, you'll get, you'll get all your plates down. You'll know exactly what you need to do with that machine because every machine is different. Yeah, that worked. So that did give us a really nice emboss on there. And it, and it cuts the wafer thin dies nice. The other thing is, is that these big dies, like the one we cut with the other machine, will not fit through the opening at all of this machine. So, if you want to cut any big dies whatsoever, and those are the ones that are fat, that you know they have small square ones and long ones and all sorts, but the ones that are fat like this will not fit through this machine at all. Not with any kind of, I mean, it won't even fit all by itself. It won't fit through this machine. So that's the one thing that I don't like about this machine is it will not cut the big size. So, yes, it cuts wider items, but it doesn't cut the thicker items. And that's why I had to kind of still, like, keep my big kick and have this one because one would do one thing, one would do another. So that's something you'll want to think about is, you know, do you really want to have that many do you want to have to have an extra machine or do you want to start out with a machine that will work for everything? So, and these rubber embossing folders are made that when you when you have large dies like this, um, well I can do, let me cut one. There are a lot of dies like that that are very intricate and they have they have things like designed into them that let's say you're cutting a bird the bird's feathers would um, like emboss the sh like a feathery shape on your paper. Instead of cutting it, it would emboss it. So let's see, we need the base plate, then the rubber plate, then the die face up, then our paper. Then it says the pink plate, the B plate. 
and this is the type of embossing it was talking about when it says embossing plate on here. So what this is going to do, and again I'm going to have to give it a push with my hip. Now if you had this hooked down, and that cracking is totally normal, you're going to hear that on all of your different machines at different times. And they say that means it's cutting, but actually, well this one is cutting and embossing at the same time. So now that's going to fall out the other side, so I need to reach over and grab it. Okay. Well, that did not cut this time, and it did not emboss, so we didn't have quite enough pressure. But what it would do is it would emboss a line around the edges here that were on the edges of your die here. So that's, that's what the rubber plates do, is they press the metal into your paper to make another, instead of a cut, to make a, uh, a shape, a, a point of interest. So, so that is the Grand Caliber. Um, it is a good machine. There's nothing really wrong with it. But again, the only thing that I don't like about it is all of the different plates that you have to use and having to figure out which plates work to do what you're trying to do. And like I said, if this was the machine that you got, let's say you got one on sale or you found one at a garage sale, it is still a good machine, um, but you need to make sure that you have all of the different plates because there are things you can't do without certain plates, and, um, and it won't do the big size. So if you ever got big size, you would need another machine to cut those. So... That is the Grand Caliber. If you're only cutting thin dies, it works great. and um, But it's not my favorite. So next, the next machine that I had got was the Baby Blue. So we're going to go to that next. I'll be back in just a minute. Okay, so now we have the Baby Blue, which is a little portable die cutting machine. And the nice thing about this is you can go sit on your couch and die cut or embellish or, or emboss or do whatever you want to do. Um, it's portable. You can take it with you somewhere if you want to craft. So that's one really nice thing about this. It comes with um, three plates, two B plates, which you would use together for embossing folders, and an A plate, which is your base plate for cutting. And, um, and then I had this um, rubber mat that um, was for my Big Kick, and I had it came in a pack of two, so I just cut one down that would fit the same size as my plate. So if I want to emboss a small die, I can do that. And um, so, and the other nice thing is you can use up all your scraps. I just took some of the papers that we had just cut and I just cut some small pieces that would fit on my plates. So first we'll cut, so let's see here. We've got a little square, little square die. Put it cutting side up, put the paper on top. Then a cutting plate and just put that right through there and there we go that cuts really nicely and it always seems to cut very nicely and I really like that and then you know you can that's really kind of cute do another one on there I'm getting off subject but do another one on there offset the other way I like it. That'd make a cute front of the card. Now another one like this one right here and then just trim it up nicely and that would make a really cute front to a card. So it die cuts very nicely anything up to three inches and it also embosses and you can use any type of embossing folder that you have. I have a long one here. So long as your so long as your embossing folder is less than three inches and I'm just going to cut along the edge of this so that I can use this later on. And for embossing folders, you use the 2B plates, which are just a little bit thinner, and that accounts for the fact of how fat your um, embossing folders are when you put them together. Now I just got that off a little bit. Well, all of a sudden I'm just all fingers. There you go, put your embossing plate in there. Sometimes you just have to get them started a little bit. Don't ever overforce your machines, any of them. 
you could get your things stuck in there. There we go, and that embosses really nicely. Really like that. You could put that right up the side of there like that with your other little hole, hole cut down there, and that would make a really cute card. So, and then, you know, I have one here that's got the Queen of Hearts on it. And it's a little bit of a bigger embossing folder. Nope, had my other embossing folder in the way. And there we go, that's embossed very nicely. So it embosses really well. You also have this size embossing folder that fits into it. So anything that's smaller than three inches will work. We did the flat dies. Now also you have these type of dies, which these are Provocraft dies, and they are the ones with the razor blades in it, like the Bigs dies, but not a big die. And so those will cut, again because they are fatter than your little fat wafer thin dies, you would use your 2B plates. Just roll that through. Oops, and see it did not cut here in the middle. So before I pick this up, I'm going to take a piece of paper and I'm going to rip it. Now I want it only to be pretty much right there where it's not cut. Where it's already cut, we know the pressure was good. So you only want to put pressure, I hope that you can see this, here where it's not cut. That's where I want to put my pressure. And let's put that back through and see how that works. And sometimes I also find that if you've got a problem with cutting, if you go slower and give it a little bit of time to really feel that pressure or to really push on those blades, let's take off our shim and then look and sure enough it's cut. As a matter of fact, our, our little circle stuck here. But so this cute little die has flowers. It has the little flowers and a stem and the little circle. And just go around there and get those. Oops. It is a little bit of a delicate die. And actually, I think I've had trouble with this die itself before. Um, it was just one I got. I picked up a whole lot of my things in um, D stashes. Um, when it was something that I thought I could afford. Yeah, this one still has not cut the best, but you can take your little trimmer scissors and cut around there. But that was not the fault of the machine. That was, whoops, ripped the paddle off. That was the fault of the die itself because I've had problems with that before. So, but, and here's another one. This one is just a large flower. And just put a piece of paper on there. B plate and B plate because they are fatter. And there's that one, and it cut perfectly. So, so you can cut the little bit of the thicker dies because you've got the ability to cut with or to do the embossing. So you've got two plates that will give you a, a, a thickness, allow you to do things with thickness. And um, so this one works really well. I used it to cut out a bunch of small dies when I was making my homemade rubber sta or uh, foam stamps. And I just sat on the couch and I just pulled out all of my little dies and I just sat there and cut, cut, cut. And um, I had to do two thicknesses of the foam. And so, you know, I had to cut it twice. So I just sat there and cut them and glued them together. And it was really actually quite pleasant to just sit in front of the TV and play with this and have something to do while I was watching TV. So that's the Baby Blue. Um, I know you can get these on Create and Craft. They are uh, $49.95, so $50 for the Baby Blue, or $60 you get the Baby Blue and you get some dyes and some paper with it. Um, so, you know, it's, it's kind of a nice starter machine if you're just starting out, because you would actually be surprised at how many dyes that you have. I mean, if you look at this die compared to the size of this opening, um, you know, it, you have a lot of dies. Once you start getting dies, 
a whole lot of everything that I have fits through this machine. So, except for the great big ones, um, well, anything over three inches. But it, it is a nice machine, and it does do your smaller embossing folders. So, you know, it, it has a lot of ability for such a small machine, and it's a, a nice, reasonable price. So, that's the Baby Blue. And finally, I'm going to go to the Crossover by Tattered Lace, and I'll be back in just a minute. Okay, and finally we have the crossover, which I do have to say is my favorite machine. Um, the nice thing about this machine, now the, the bad thing about this machine is I think that they're about $200 um, on Create and Craft. I don't know where else you can get them because I think Tattered Lace is like an English company and Create and Craft is an English shopping channel on TV. And so... But the one thing that I really love about this is that this folds up just like this, and it's just like a suitcase. Now, granted, it's heavy. It's not super, super light. I mean, it's not super, super heavy either, but um, it's heavy so that it, you know, it's got all metal parts and everything in it. But the nice thing is, is this is as much space as this takes. You know, you can just slide it right in somewhere that's this wide and grab it out when you need it. It doesn't have to stay open all the time. But then, even though it, it takes up such a small footprint in your craft room, when you're using it, it has this great big platform here for when you're getting ready to put your... when you're getting everything set up to put it through. And then you slide it through the thing is it's so big I can't get it all on camera and it comes out the other side and it also has a, a plate there to catch it's got little rollers to roll your plate across as it comes out <coughs> excuse me and I really do like I do have to say that's the one thing about this and about the big kick is that they both have this platform to start with and to finish with that grab um, whatever you're working on and that works really well so we'll cut with this, and um, first off, we'll cut we'll cut some wafer thin dies. Let's see, let's make something. I'm trying to not totally waste paper, and also give you a few tips. Now, whenever you're, no matter what machine you're you're doing, if you want to maybe like I'm going to make a little pattern here. I want this little one in the middle and the big one on the outside, so I don't want that to move because I'm putting that on a on an angle like a like a diamond. And then I also don't want my other one to move. So I'm going to tape those die side or cut side up. I'm going to tape those right to my base plate. And now they're going to stay there. So when I cut them out of my piece of paper, they're not going to have shifted and, and wind up being in the wrong position. Now when you're, the nice thing about the crossover also is it has this dial and it goes from 0 to 18. And you choose the setting that you need to cut or to emboss or to do whatever you're doing. So now this is a thin die. Back that a little bit. And the thin die is cut at about three. And you know, like, there's different size in thin dies too. So, you know, three might work for one. You might need two and a half for the next. And this one just goes all, you don't have to pick two, then three, then four. It just moves those wheels slowly. The numbers just kind of give you a reference point. Um, but you can cut it 2.4, 2.5. You know, I mean, it doesn't matter. There is no exact, you don't have to be on an exact number. So the thin dies cut at about 3. So I'm going to try this at 3. Just take that all the way through. There we go. cut and so and this is just double it's not double sided tape it's low tack tape but I don't buy low tack tape what I do is I just take regular piece of scotch just pull a piece off stick it on your arm pull it off a couple of times and um, now it's not so tacky and that will hold things without like sticking to your paper it'll come up nice and easy um, and then I just stick them on the edge of my machine so we have the little one that we can use See, this is really cute. You can put that on a card. That's really cute. I like the way that that turned out. So that's how it cuts the wafer-thin dies. And then we've also got, like, the other steel rude dies that are thinner. And, um, let's see. Get a, 
piece of paper for that. This is just like a little mountain scene. So just put that one in there. And I'm going to have to adjust my roller to about 11. And then we'll see how that one works. my tape and it's making noise. Okay, so let's see how this one is doing. And the thing is, if you cut, if you put it through and it doesn't work, you can adjust it up a little bit. If it just, well, if it won't go through, you can adjust it up. And if it goes through and it doesn't cut, um, see this one didn't cut the best. And so I can just, I'll grab another piece of paper and put it on there. The other thing I like about this machine, it will take an eight and a half by 11. Uh, the Grand Caliber, you've got to cut off about a half an inch, it'll only take about eight inches. All right, now I had set that at 11, so I am going to add a little pressure or go down to about just below 11 my plate on there, line it all up. Let's see if I can get that to go. Sometimes when you're putting in something, I don't know how to say that, but if you uh, don't make it take the whole straight edge, if you kind of put it in corner first, um, it'll catch a little bit better. There's my scissors. So let's try that's just just to get it to go, just to get it to catch. And also if you make sure it's not sticking out the outside edge so that your your plates can kind of come together and catch first and then your machine can catch your die and everything. Um, sometimes that's just an easier way to get it to go through. Oops popped out the other side because it was a little bit tight. And then that just comes apart there. And I think I have a little bit of a bad part on my die there. Like I said, I have a lot of used dies, but there we go. That cut really nicely. It even cut little, like these are mountains, so there's little spots there where the snow would be. There's a little river down here that's embossed. I don't know if you can see that, but so that turned out really well. It's got a moon pops right out, and a bird pops right out. So cuts the steel rule dies. And I do write down these numbers of approximately where the different types of dies and everything work, just so that later on I have them. Okay, now the big dies. So what I do with the big dies, and I, well, it's the way that it cuts. So. Um, I take my cutting plate and put it down there because obviously this is a big fat die. I don't have that much space in there. I put my, I open up, let's see, no I don't. What do I do those at? I think about 15. Put it at about 15. I put my cutting side down to my cutting plate. And then I basically use this in place of the, um, what do you call it? The base plate. And there we go. And there's our little man. So it cuts those. And obviously it does embossing folders. It does the large, large dies. This is a great big die. Let's cut that one. And again, it's a it's a flat die. So the flat dies are right around three. Now this is a flat or wafer thin, I guess is what they call them. But like I said, some of them are different sizes than others. This one um, kind of seems like it might be a little thicker than the other ones I had. Yeah, that's an awful lot of pressure on three. 
So I'm going to back it off and I'm going to put it, take off just a little bit of pressure. Maybe just like, not even three and a half. Let's see what that does. Yeah, that one is a wafer thin die and yet it, it's thicker. It's made by a different company and, you know, everybody makes their things different. Ooh, that's a little tight at the end. And there we go. And it cut. And so the thing is, is that this, this wafer thin die and this wafer thin die are just a little bit different in size. So when you're using your regular machines, this one would need maybe an extra sh shimmer or two of paper, um, whereas this one wouldn't. So, you know, that's just, that's what I really like about this machine is the adjustability um, to get a really good cut no matter what you're using. And it does really, it goes all the way from the Biggs dies all the way down to the wafer thin dies. It does small tiny things all the way up to, I think that's, I think it's got an 8 inch. Let's see here. It actually has an 8.5 inch mouth. So, um, and then we can throw an embossing folder. Let's emboss this. Embossing. Embossing folders are fat. So they are, let's see here. <coughs> Excuse me. Let's go about 11. Okay. And there we go. It's embossed beautifully. So, I think that's it for this. I mean, basically, this machine will do anything. It'll emboss. It'll cut large dies. It will cut big dies. Um, you know, it will cut the, the thinner steel rolled dies. It will cut any size wafer thin die, whether it's extra wafer thin or regular wafer thin. Um... It folds up, it, it's adjustable in how much pressure you have, and it only takes two plates. At all times, just two plates. There aren't like three or four or five or, you know, you don't have to try and figure out what plates do I use because the, the instead of doing other plates, you just adjust the pressure on it. So this is my favorite machine, and I'm not sponsored by Tattered Lace or anything, even though I do have two of their machines. Um, this is just, it, it just really is a good machine. But like I said, if you can't afford this machine, the big, the big kick is a great machine. I really like that machine and it cuts the big dies. Um, the little baby blue is a starter machine is a really nice machine and it may not even be a starter machine. It may do you forever, you know, depending on how large of things that you want to, that you want to cut or that you want to emboss. Um, you know, so. These are just my opinions on these machines, and I hope that this helped you out, Marsha. And I hope that everyone else that's watching enjoyed the video. Thank you all very much for watching, and have an outstanding day. Bye-bye.